Happy Thursday again. This time it's Thursday. I'm doing this early Thursday morning now. I apologize for yesterday after I had done it. Uh, I didn't realize something. Uh, a few people know Will. At times when I know I'm going to be real busy in the morning. And it's like later at night, a little before time to go to bed. I've got a little time. I'll do it to put it up for the following morning. So I know I won't have time in the morning. And Tuesday night, I admit, I had one too many Uncle Brian with us. It's good shit. I couldn't even imagine getting this back in high school. This string is called cherry pie. It's all medical, pharmaceutical grade. It's illegal here. We have three dispensaries. Three now. When it first became legal, we had one in the city. And as the other two popped up, the competition, their prices got driven way down. It's put the street dealers out of business here. The prices are so great now that street dealers can't compete. People would rather go to a dispensary rather than you know, look around and she was on a fucking corner selling a bag they're going to pay a lot of money for. It's not going to be weighed up the way it should. Everything's eyeballed and it's eyeballed in favor of the fucking deal to make more money. You know, when the first dispensary popped up, it was going for around 300 bucks an ounce. Street dealers were going like 250 I used to get my shit from a friend that was a grower. He's a licensed grower of pharmaceutical. So I got super great deals. Then as the other two dispensaries popped up, oh yeah, they cut their price, they cut their price. This weed that was once going for $300 an ounce is going for $108 an ounce. In fact, some of the street dealers were going to the dispensaries and buying it for $108 and trying to sell it for $250 on the street. And then, well, I'll give you a deal at $200. People are like, fuck you, why should I pay you $200? I'll go where you got it and get it for the same fucking $108. It's pretty much put street dealers out of business. And I think I had one too many Uncle Brian lifters on Tuesday night when I made the video. I forgot what fucking day it was. I admit it. Anyway. Anyway. Uh, let's see. What am I going to talk about? Uh, oh, yeah. The trolls are coming back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Trolls are back. That's to be expected. I checked on a few things. I checked on the Crypt Keeper. He still has the personality of a fucking toenail. Still begging for subs and views. You know. You gotta build that through your team, man. Save those fucking kids, you know. The day that thing happens. It's the day my doorbell rings. I open it and Jesus Christ is standing there holding a domino speech and says that'll be fourteen ninety nine. He hasn't touched it. Sandy, his other co-conspirator, hasn't touched it. Sanford, the start of the whole fucking scam, hasn't touched it. The only guy that did anything, he worked on the heads, that guy in Florida. They're still fucking sitting there. <laughs> he got to his wits end with him. That's all I can do, and he fucking gave up on him, you know? Why bother doing any more? There's never going to be a prep block, built block for them to be fucking bolted through, so why fucking bother? That whole thing was a scam to build this channel, you know? Whole thing to build this channel. From what I understood, he lost his original channel with some guy he was involved with. The guy died and he got locked out of his own channel. He lost his fucking income. Gee, what am I going to do now? You know, the guy's too fucking old to be building his award-winning race engine. You see? Hi. Subscribe. Subscribe. Hi. I am David Vizard. If you can give me 20 minutes of your time, I will share with you my over 60 years of award-winning race engine building engines. Please subscribe to my channel. Watch my videos. Give me views. Give me subs. That whole thing was just uh, a quick bait scam thing to get people interested in something to build this channel. That's all it's about. Just like with all of them. You know, the Sam, you know, Sanford is quick bait and I don't even want to get into that again. But I will get into people with subs and shit like that. They're like, fuck. You know, they... They want to collect subs like little kids want to collect fucking Pokemon cards. In their case, some people are doing it. 
You don't have to feed their bank account. Others are doing it to feed their ego, to see how popular they can be. In Sanford's case, it's to feed a bank account and feed his ego and narcissism and self-centeredness. You know, it's all self-serving agendas. Sub, sub, sub. You know, hey, are they going to have another no-show nationals this year? You haven't heard anything about that. You know, <laughs> I hear that too from us. Oh, yeah, look, Cabral, look how many subs you have. You don't have any subs. What do I got now, like 15 or something? I don't even really pay attention. I know what I had on the other channel, and I'll tell you how it got to be that way. Cause, oh, yeah? yeah? And I tell them, oh, yeah? Uh, I don't have a lot of subs. Yeah, what? And all these guys that fucking troll me. I've gone to look at their channel. They have two or three subs. Some have none. No fucking content whatsoever. No fucking content. Nothing. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and they're telling me these things. And they're telling me these things. Like I said, it looks like it was typed by a fucking, you know, dyslexic crackhead. Very poor spelling grammar. Listen, if you guys want to fucking insult me, at least insult me with words that are properly spelled and sentence structure that's coherent, okay? <laughs> <coughs> Still at this half a pack a day, motherfucker. Uh, you know, at least show me some degree of fucking respect, you know what I mean? Go get a GED, then come back and troll me, okay? But this whole thing sucks. That whole no-show nationals. You gotta have 500 subs again, why? 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 Why that magic 500 number? Quite sure a lot of guys had nice cars. They were within trailering distance, even within driving distance. They would have loved to go and race and have some fun. You know what I mean? They went allowed. Oh, no, you gotta have five. And then, they were, you know, this guy wants to race. Okay, let's go sub his channel. Everybody was jumping on other people's channels to pump up their channel to get them those 500 subs so they'd be eligible. Why? That whole thing, in my opinion, I could be wrong. I don't know much about that. My friend on there, Philip Serial, and I'm glad that we reconnected. Uh, he told me a few things here and there. All right, Phil? I'm a total fucking idiot when it comes to that. I don't know shit from sure I know or about subs and what qualifies. But I do recall hearing from somebody at one time, they lowered the requirement amount to like 500, if I remember correctly. And when I heard that, I said, oh, that's why that 500. What they're just trying to do is get each other monetized to make money. I think that was the whole purpose of that, to get people monetized to make money. The racing was a secondary, the racing was a side effect of their real purpose and intent of that event. I could be wrong, but that's what I think about it. And at that time, I was hearing, Oh, yeah, Cabral, why don't you go race Sanford for that five grand? And I said two things at the time. I said, firstly, I live in the far northeast in New England here, at the very base of Cape Cod. I'm going to drive halfway across the fucking country to Missouri, to keep Big Wilbur and the rest of his pot-bellied, hillbilly, redneck friends happy? Really? I have better things to do with my time and better places to go. And secondly, and it's kind of ironic, this was before Sanford officially made it clear he was not going to show up. I said, instead of being concerned about me going, you should be more concerned about Sanford going because he backs out of everything he says he's going to fucking do. And sure as shit, shortly after that, you know, he fucking backed out. Fucking head went up. And if I had wanted to race, I could have. There are a few people that I have things. I don't show them off on here and brag about it. I sit in here sometimes. I go outside, you know. Do, 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 walking out my front door. Cross street to the beach. What's going on? Feed the seagulls and shit, you know, and take a walk down to the beach. One time I took a walk with Auntie Peanut, Auntie Billy's dog. She got from another nurse at the hospital. That was abandoned. She couldn't keep it. Oh, and what? It was going to go to a shelter. And she fell in love with the dog. She brought it home one day. And I think you saw it on their video. And that's when something happened. Phil, you caught it. Phil, I think, was the... Two other people caught it, too. And I think I told you at the time, like, shh, don't tell anybody, Phil. 
You said, hey, Brian, what's that red thing you're hiding behind your house over there that you could, it popped up on the video. At my house here in the back. And I said, if I wanted to erase something, I could. I bought another one. Not right after my black one got wrecked. I didn't even drive for a while. It took me a while to recover. I had already had the Acadia. I had already had the Infinity. I had vehicles to drive. Auntie Billy's got her Beamer. And then, after a little while, I bought uh, another Z06, a red one. It's a few years new. I bought it used, but it's in very good condition. My black one, I bought it used a few years old, but it was in very good condition. This one's a few years new. It's got a few more horsepower than the black one. And, uh, you know, I could show it off. That's just not me. I, you know, I don't need to do cold starts and making a video washing my car or changing the oil. And, you know, Sanford shows off like a junk and glorifies it. Like, you know, I guess people need, thinks people are going to be jealous of what he owns. That's, once again, his ego. He acts like a little kid. He needs attention. He craves attention. He needs people to tell him how great his junk is, how great he is. You know, this is fairly obvious by now. But Phil caught that, then a couple other people. And other people here that know me, have seen it. They've seen me driving it. I've pulled over, talked with them. They've been to my house. I don't need to show up yet. And then, oh, I got, listen. For those of you pickle sniffers that have the fucking attention span of a crackhead with ADD, I'm only going to say this one more fucking time. Pay attention. I got hit with it again. Oh, was that really the picture of your accident? I had already said previously in a video. For those of you that watch it, or for those of you pickle sniffers that watch it and forgot about it, you have the, you know, what does they say? A goldfish has the attention span or a memory of fucking 10 seconds? Kind of funny, 10 seconds. I've heard something about 10 seconds before. A claim made about 10 seconds. It'll come to me. Uh, I already went in depth with this. No. Uh... I felt like putting up something to hopefully help people realize the dangers of drunk driving. We had recently had two accidents here, two serious. One person died, the other got pretty messed up and will be messed up for a long time due to being hit by drunk drivers. And it made me think, you know, uh, it gets talked about, but sometimes some people don't really know and see the full extent of what happens. And with car guys, some car guys don't even give a fuck about what happens to people. But if they see a really nice car wrecked and destroyed, wow, look what happened to that car. That sucks. What happened to the person? Ah, fuck him. You know what I mean? They're more concerned about the damage to the car. And that's very true with a lot of you, you know. And when I put up the... That was me in the fucking hospital, you know. Uh... My wrist, I even show the x-ray of, you know, where I got all the plates in my hand. My wrist all bandaged up when I had come out of surgery. Uh, my face that got fucked up. You couldn't see my broken ribs, my broken collarbone, you know. I did have a broken nose. That was shortly after I was brought in. My, my sister came to see me. Uh, Auntie Billy was at the hospital. On a shift, she had come down. My sister took some pictures. Give me a minute. Uh, I had got teeth knocked out. My jaw was broken, broken nose. I still had blood all over my face. In fact, when my nose got broken, the, the cartilage came right through. You could see the, it looked like a big white spot. That was the fucking cartilage and the blood was coming down. Blood coming, I fractured orbital eye socket, concussion, some stitches in my head. And I went into surgery uh, a few hours later. Um, so, and I, somebody had showed me that picture, a friend of mine here. See what I meant? You ever see this? This looks 99.9% .9 identical to your accident. See, when that happened here in Fort Tabor, here on this peninsula, we're like our own little community. In fact, we call the inner part of New Bedford, we call it the mainland. It's where I am here from 
East Beach, as we call it, across the street from me, the West Beach behind me. It's only about 250 yards. It's about a mile and three quarters long. We all kind of know each other here, where we live personally, especially at the beach. We have a lot of festivals and beach parties, and we interact. We know what we drive when a car goes by. We know who it is, whose car it is. We know each other here a lot more than the people in the inner part of the city. There's a population here of close to 130,000 people now. You know, there's only about 5,000 of us here down on this peninsula. Probably less. Probably less, even. I never took a head count, but that's a pretty fair guesstimate. And when that happened, uh, and plus the situation, the location, you know, where I, I got nailed up against a concrete retaining wall that separates the roadway from the part of the beach that's a little further down, real close to Fort Tabor, where it's grassy and rocky. People don't want to go there and swim away in the sand. The upper part here, where I live here, uh, or the lower part, I should say, is where, you know, it's a beach area. Same thing on the opposite side over at East Beach. Um, and when it happened, Pete, you know, that's when you know, if I didn't know better, I'd, I'd swear that was your accident. Because that happened in a place where it was, you could see there was water, there was a concrete retaining wall, and there was water in the car. That's, I was up against the wall like that, you know, when they T-boned me. But, uh, and it was all over Facebook. All over Facebook. We have like six or seven New Bedford groups here. People congregating their little groups, private, some public. What's going on in the city, everything. And people trying to sell things at times. And people that live here saw it, you know. The houses across the street come out. Wow, what happened? They were taking pictures. It was all over Facebook. It wasn't just about every city group. Because some people knew me. People in other parts of the city had no idea. A lot of them are probably... Don't even come down to this area unless they're going to the beach and they don't go down that far. People, yeah, you hear about what happened to Brian, eh? Yeah, that's Brian, you know. They knew me. They they saw it. Before they even took pictures, they saw it. They were, they came outside and stood and watching the cops you know, stand back, you know. Uh, I don't remember anything, you know. I was taken out of the car unconscious. I woke up in the hospital later. So I didn't take any pictures. But there were a lot of pictures around that people took. And, you know, the thought of, you know, I'm going to go to those groups and ask around, hey, you know me? Oh, yeah, Brian, how you doing? I had popped in once in a while. You know, they, they kinda, I popped in once in a while, chit-chat, how you doing, this, that, the other thing. Uh, by the way, uh, those of you that took the pictures of my accident three and a half years ago, <laughs> do you happen to have them saved somewhere on a flash drive or something in your digital camera or on your phone? Do you happen to still have those pictures? Would you kindly send them to me because I need it to go along with something? Because uh, I want to do something to help stress the importance of, you know, why you should not drink and drive. I didn't want to devote the time and energy to do that and probably make myself look like a fucking fool. So when I saw this, I said, it's good enough. It serves the purpose. And that was it. Okay, we clear now. You're going to have to ask me again. Okay. Let it sink into your fucking three functioning brain cells, okay, you pickle sniffers? This is the last time I'm going to fucking talk about it. But, uh... Yeah, Phil, Phil knows. <laughs> A couple other people. Remember that? Shh, don't tell anybody. Oh, yeah? I want to see a cop pop, pop the clamshell and pull a hole. I don't want to do any of that shit. So it doesn't matter to me. I have it because I enjoy it when I want to take it out. And I don't take it out that often. A weekend thing here and there, you know. I'm busy on a bike with my boys and doing other things. To me, it's only a car. It's only a car. It's only a car. It's not worth showing off. It's not worth bragging about. You do what you want to do. And I know what I know. People that have nice cars that I don't have to own. You never see them on here. You know? They don't feel a need to come on here and try to fucking impress anybody. Maybe we don't have big egos. <laughs> Maybe we don't feel a need to impress people. We're not on here to try to get subs, to get monetized, to make a fucking buck off you. We're not on here to try to sell hats and t-shirts. 
We're not on here trying to get people to pump up an ego and a narcissism that we don't have. <laughs> and we don't want one. I'm going to run a little long on this. Now, here's a funny thing. When I talked about the no-show nationals, you know. That I have 500 subs. You know, I was I was being begged. Oh, yeah, Cabral. And, uh, they were trying to embarrass me. Oh, yeah, why don't you go race? And at that time, I think... I think I had like 22 subs or some shit. <laughs> yeah, I didn't give a fuck, you know. And I guess they started thinking, hey, Cabral don't have those 500 subs anyway. Even if he wants to go, he can't. So they came up with a little plan. You know, within three fucking days, hey, you pickle sniffers. You know, yesterday's video recently was brought to you by the number two. <laughs> Today's video was brought to you by the number three. One, two, three. Within three days, when I set up this account here, my friend Kevin, that I'm, he's allowing me access to it. I didn't set up a YouTube studio. I had that up. So I got more detailed information. I got a lot more notifications. And I had it linked to my Google and email. My fucking email was flooded. I mean, I had a list. I was there scrolling and scrolling. I, I finally gave up. This person subscribed. That person subscribed. That person sub I had all these fucking new subs. I have no idea who these fucking people were. They came to my channel like a pack of fucking wolves and subbed me to make sure I had at least those 500 subs this way. I'd have no fucking excuse to not be able to go. They were trying to blackmail me and embarrass me so if I didn't show, oh yeah, they were trying to shame me once again. Oh, Cabral chickened out, Cabral chickened out, he's got the subs, you know. Hey, who fucking chickened out? Who's the one that chickened out? Huh? Who? Who? Who fucking backed out? Who didn't want to go? Who didn't show up? Like I said originally, you should be more concerned about him showing up than me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Look what happened. And uh, and that's why I had all those subs. And even that wasn't a lot. You know? But uh, <laughs> the links they will go to to defend their grand poobah, the great, one and only, Uncle Sanford. But, uh, so anyway, I apologize. That's what happens when I make a video on the previous night after having one too many Uncle Brian Wifters, and I kind of forget what day it is. It's not the first time I've forgotten what day it is when I've had a few Uncle Brian Wifters later, and I, well, well, well. <laughs> but anyway, uh, hope you have a great day. Hope you have fun. Hope you stay safe. Uh, you won't go sand for trolls. You guys have a nice day too. You know. Uh, people from the past. Many of them are coming back. And I think maybe that relates to somehow. When I talk about. When I talked about friendships. You know Sanford's friends from the past. Uh way in the past. <laughs> they don't want anything to fucking do with him these days. But I establish lines of communication with people over an extended period of time that the only reason that lines of communications were broken was on my end because of what I was going through at that time with my sister. And in my state of mind, I had been in a little previously before that. I was just getting kind of bored with this shit and didn't want to be bothered. Uh, I'm the one that severed the ties of communication when I came back. I didn't go looking for them. They found me. Only two people I reached out to, Will and Dick. You know, somehow along the line, a lot of them have come back. You know, Phil, Mr. Swing, uh, Kenny, Paul. He's a crazy bastard. Paul Diamond. Cracks me up. He likes his emojis. All fucked up emojis. You know, some of you people make me laugh. I enjoy it. I really enjoy it. You know, I have people say, oh, you make me laugh. You know, some of you make me laugh, and I mean that in a good way. You give me a good laugh, and I appreciate it. But it's kind of funny, you know. I guess when you really do have a real friendship with someone, it kind of lasts for a while. You know, in my case, several years. You know. It's a good thing. You are good people. You are good people. And I guess that's about all I have to say for today.